VP of Sales here. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, Zach, i um, been working at CodeMonkey for a number of years here. I uh, started off as a teacher and uh, really looking forward to this uh, webinar. And thank you all for joining. I'll be here to uh, answer any questions on the Q&A. Molly will talk more about that. Yeah, um, so Zach is going to be our Q&A champion today. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please use the Q&A box through Zoom. Zach will be checking that and will be responding to them as they come in. So today's webinar is the first in a three-part series designed to give schools and districts a look at what CodeMonkey is all about in our course pathway, how teachers can leverage the platform and feel empowered to teach in coding, whether or not they have a coding background, and how schools and districts can implement or expand their K-8 coding curriculum. So today's agenda, we are going to start with an overview of CodeMonkey, and then at the majority of our time, um, our short time together, we will introduce our K-8 through coding pathway. This will include our block-to-text-based coding progression, our new digital literacy courses, and what students will learn. So who is CodeMonkey? CodeMonkey was established in 2014 with the goal of creating developmentally appropriate and engaging curriculum for teaching students how to code. Online platform was designed with schools and teachers in mind. The new features that are developed and released are primarily based on the feedback from our customers. We're checking in with them throughout the school year, asking what's working, what can be better, and that's how we determine where we're going to make improvements or where we are going to add new things, whether it's tools on the platform or new courses. Our coding and digital literacy courses are aligned to national standards, and we are continuing to expand our standards alignment to state standards as well. No prior coding experience is needed for teachers to use CodeMonkey. Teachers aren't going to be getting slowed down with an overly technical platform. Classroom setup and management is easy. Lesson plan solutions and coding concept guides are included with all subscriptions. And our team is available as an additional resource for technical and non-technical questions that may arise. So our K through eight coding pathway, CodeMonkey offers, offers the opportunity to teach students how to code in both block and text-based coding environments, which can accommodate different learning abilities, build confidence in students, and minimize gaps in learning. We provide a coding course progression that begins with block-based coding before introducing students to text-based coding, where they learn to code using industry-recognized languages, such as CoffeeScript and Python. Our K-8 coding pathway begins over here with CodeMonkey Junior, which is a pre-reader course following CodeMonkey Junior, block-based coding, which is that traditional drag and drop um, block coding, is then introduced in Beaver Achiever. Got a little ahead of myself here. Uh, now then starting as early as third grade, we are introducing text-based coding, CoffeeScript, which is a very beginner-friendly language. I am Coding Adventure. Dodo does math, Game Builder, those build off of Coding Adventure also using CoffeeScript. And then our more advanced courses, Banana Tales and Coding Chatbots, introduce Python also in a game-based environment like the rest of our courses. Now let's check out some of these courses in more detail. So again, getting ahead of myself, happy trigger fingers over here. So we have CodeMonkey Junior and Beaver Achiever, which are the first courses in our pathway. CodeMonkey Junior teaches students as early as pre-K the basics of coding. With the progression of challenges across four different courses, CodeMonkey Junior eases pre-readers into gaining an understanding of fundamental coding concepts. Students will learn and practice these concepts by building a set of visual coding instructions to help lead a monkey to a treasure chest. The four courses are aptly named after the concepts students will learn, which are sequencing and loops, advanced sequencing and loops, conditional loops, and procedures. Following CodeMonkey Junior, students are introduced, as I mentioned, to the drag and drop block-based coding in Beaver Achiever. The minimal text throughout the Beaver Achiever courses 
makes it the perfect solution for early readers, and narration is also available throughout the courses. Through Beaver Achiever, students further expand their skills in sequencing and loops, conditional loops, and if-else conditions. Now, talking about these courses is great. Looking at all of this text on a slide, also great, I'm sure. But let's see what it looks like on the platform. Uh, CodeMonkey courses are consistent in how it concepts are introduced and taught. In the form of gamified challenges, students must demonstrate their gained knowledge of various coding elements in order to proceed through the story map in the game. Should also mention at this point, if since I missed it early on, but CodeMonkey is completely browser based. All of these courses um, can work on Chromebooks, laptops, computers, our block based courses, CodeMonkey Junior and Beaver Achiever. Um, are also compatible with iPads. Um, but moving back to this, so initial challenges are going to be teaching basic coding concepts, while later challenges ask students to use their creativity to form combinations of these elements in their coding solutions. So we're, what we're looking at right here, um, this title that says sequencing, this is going to be the story map um, for CodeMonkey Jr. showing the first one through seven challenges. So every challenge across all of our courses is based on a three-star rating. Students are going to receive immediate feedback after they submit their solution and can see their progress in the course on a story map such as this. Students can return to any previously completed challenge for further practice or to attempt a higher rating. Students are not able to jump ahead and skip challenges in order to ensure that they're learning the necessary skills. So here on, let's go into challenge seven. So here on challenge seven in CodeMonkey Junior, by clicking on the arrow, students will create a simple sequence in order to direct the monkey to pick up the banana and move to the treasure chest. So here we will need to move right, go up, move right again, and then we'll push play. It's very exciting. We made it to the chest and I can see that I received three stars on this challenge. Now that it's been completed, I can go forward to the next challenge in this course. Now let's look at a different challenge. So what we're looking at here is a different challenge, also a challenge number seven, uh, but on the course Beaver Achiever. We can see that students use the drag and drop functions and block-based coding to create a different sequence in order for the beaver to drop logs and to build his dam, his or her dam. So here we will drop two logs, move right twice, drop again, and then we'll run through our code. I knew we could do it, we passed it again. Got three stars on this challenge. And then just by clicking the next arrow, we can move on to challenge eight, or we can start this over and complete this challenge again. So another course um, is Coding Adventure. Coding Adventure is the first course that started it all for CodeMonkey. It introduces students to text-based coding. Students will gain an understanding of the fundamental concepts of programming, as well as build skills in computational thinking and problem solving. Game Builder is an intermediate level course that builds off of Coding Adventure, where students will learn fundamental game design concepts. And using these skills, students can then showcase their creativity by developing their own custom games and challenges in Challenge Builder that can be shared with their peers. So Challenge Builder is going to be more of a sandbox type environment where students can take the concepts that they've learned throughout Coding Adventure or throughout Game Builder and again, create their own custom challenges that they can then share. Text-based coding can seem intimidating to both teachers and students, I understand. Um, but the course is set up to teach concepts in incremental steps with handy tools students can use while they're working on mastering their typing and spelling skills. So let's go on to this challenge back on the platform um, and looking at the course coding adventure. This is challenge three. So here on challenge three, the objective is to write a solution that will direct the monkey here 
to pick up the banana. This challenge provides pre-written code so that students can manipulate the solution and practice using some of the tools, including the ruler, which is used for measuring. So by picking up this ruler, I can measure the distance between the monkey and the banana, which is 12 steps. It already states that here, which is great. So let's run through our code. And oops, I sent the monkey in the wrong direction. So you may have noticed the platform. Um, I just uh, clicked through it a little too quickly, but platform provided a hint for me to correct my solution. So here I'm going to go back and say, instead of turning left, let's turn right and run it again. And there we go. We re reached three stars and we can move on to the next challenge. But hints are provided throughout the courses when they're needed, if students are running into areas where they might get stuck um, to help them out. Now, further on in the course, let's go up to challenge number 32. This is where loops and variables are introduced. So using the ruler again, in challenge 32, students will correct this pre-written code um, that's already provided to them at the beginning of the challenge to show the correct number of steps between the monkey and the bananas. So currently the variable X is saying that it's five steps, but if we take this ruler, measure between the monkey and the banana, it's 15 steps. Let's just double check, banana between banana is another 15 steps. So I'll update the variable X to 15 and click run. And there we go, running around in the square, picking up each of the bananas. Now, before moving on, uh, beyond the ruler, there are additional tools that have been built in for inclusivity. So by hovering over objects, I'm able to see the spelling and I can click on any of these objects and it will be typed out for me. I can also find the relevant commands here at the bottom of the code editor that also by clicking on it, it will type it out for me. Now, this is great for students, hints are great, but what about for teachers? What resources and tools are going to be available for teachers to use as they're using CodeMonkey and teaching CoffeeScript, um, for example, to their students? So along with fully guided lesson plans for each course, teachers can also leverage the coding concept guides, which have been created for coding adventure and banana tales where CoffeeScript and Python are introduced. So all of these resources can be found on the teacher, teacher dashboard. Over here on the left-hand side, I have teacher resources and lesson plans can be found under teaching with CodeMonkey. And then we can go over to coding concepts where those more detailed uh, resources are available. So this is what the coding concept guide would look like where variables are introduced. So the coding concept guides provide a more detailed explanation for concepts introduced, including its definition, why and when is it used. It also provides examples and GIFs. These have been developed to be student facing. So if a teacher chooses to, they can provide this to their students as a further resource as they're going through the course, um, or they can keep it for themselves and use it with the entire class. All right, so that was a quick preview of just some of our coding courses, um, but for sake of time that we have, let's move on. In addition to our block and text-based coding pathway, this past year, this current year, CodeMonkey has introduced digital literacy courses, which is a new segment to our course offerings. Each course is a semester long in length and covers different topics, digital use being focused on the different aspects of computers and how to use them. Digital citizenship focuses on how students can be good citizens of the online world and be aware of their digital footprint. Both of these courses, as is CodeMonkey tradition are gamified and students work through different puzzles as they go through the courses. These would be geared towards third grade and up, um, also very relevant um, and appropriate for middle school students as well. Now, what comes next? So you've had a preview of some of the CodeMonkey courses. 
very quick crash course to give you um, an idea of what CodeMonkey can offer. But we do offer teacher trial accounts. The school year isn't over yet. You can sign up for a free teacher trial to try out CodeMonkey with your students. Um, with the free trial, you can try out the first 30 challenges of CodeMonkey Junior, Coding Adventure, and Banana Tales, as well as all of our mini courses. So although we didn't go into Banana Tales in depth or even checked out some of those challenges, you can do so yourself by signing up for a trial. And again, you can use it with your students. So the link to sign up for a teacher trial is here. But um, for a simpler URL, you can go to codemakey.com. In the upper right hand corner, there's a sign up button. And then if you're interested in learning more, we ask that you write to us at sales at codemonkey.com. Um, you can also go to our website again, codemonkey.com, and request more information through our site. Now, also don't forget, we have two more webinars uh, in, over the next two weeks. The next one is going to be February 27th, which is going to be focused on CodeMonkey for Teachers, what resources are available, what does, does the teacher dashboard and classroom dashboard look like, and then the third webinar is going to be May 4th, um, which is going to be Code Monkey for District. So as a district or a school, what can I do to bring in Code Monkey and how can we start using it? I want to thank everyone for joining us again today. And we are looking forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you, Molly. If there are any questions, feel free to write on the Q&A. We'll wait it out a few minutes. Someone asked uh, Molly, February 27th has passed. It's April 27th. It is April 27th. I am clearly living in the last two months. A uh, question was asked, we have programs for homeschoolers. We do. Um, if you want to go to codemonkey.com slash home dash plans, you can find uh, subscriptions available there for homeschools or individual learners. All right. Well, again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, Molly, there's a few more questions. All right, let's see. So one is, I am from Gabriella. I'm a robotics teacher. Would I be able to have all K-5 students access this platform? Absolutely. Uh, with our subscriptions, we include all courses as well. So you'd have the flexibility in assigning one or multiple courses based on where your students are at and what you want to use for your, your robotics program. Another question about discounts for Title I schools. If you want to reach out to us at sales at codemonkey.com, happy to go over uh, pricing options for, for your specific school. Well, I would just add to that, that if you go to our CodeMonkey grants page, uh, which we launched last year, you can see all the different wording we have for grants that you'd like to apply to. We've already created language that will enable you to easily take that language and put it into your grant application um, for, for all different types of grants available. All right, see you all later. Thank you very much, Molly. See you all uh, next Thursday.